Today we're going to be walking through observability across Lake Trail's architecture, right? And I'm sure everyone here has heard data a million times at, at this point, and maybe observability a little bit more. But who am I? Why do I matter? How do I work with data, right? I've been on a lot of sides of the coin of data and engineering. I've been a data producer and own source systems across SAP and ERPs. I've been data engineering, doing PySpark and instrumentations for transformations in data breaks and the governance side and the consumption side. So building BI reports, consuming that data, pushing it out and certifying that across, right? Do a little bit of DevOps, you know, how do you instantiate some of the particular workloads to support these data pipelines? And at the end of the day, the challenges are quite complex, right? Every organization that I work with has issues with their data and operationalizing that in a lake house strategy. So five key bullet points. What is the problem statement that we're all facing scaling these data problems in modern enterprises? Why observability matters, how we deploy it at scale and how we approach it at scale. So the time to adoption is quite important. A little bit of a demonstration and talk about some of the happy, the fun stories across how we start to roll it out for the modern enterprise, right? So I always like to start with a question, a problem statement. How many of you here today, in the past week, the past day, have received a Jira ticket, an email, a team of Slack that looks something like this? Hello, data person. This data looks incorrect. Can you look into this? Show of hands, just real quick. Okay, big crowd, tough crowd. It's great. If you're not raising your hands, you deserve a Nobel Peace Prize, right? Because at the end of the day in a modern enterprise, what we've seen, whether you're a consumer, you're an engineer, you're part of the, the data pipeline, these questions are persistent across your, a modern enterprise, right? So data on-premise, data at scale, data within the cloud as well, moving through a complex pipeline from streaming, semi-structured, structured, Apple Parquet, JSON, from start someone and end somewhere, and goes through several transformation layers and hops across, right? And these questions are persisted across every single organization. Is the data complete? Is it accurate? Is it consistent? Uh, the ML data sciences uh, types are, is the data drifting, right? How are the pipelines even running? Are my data volumes consistent to what I believe? And the, the questions just pile on and on for every organization we work with, right? Uh, one of our customers, we saw that they had about a thousand queries within a given month. And at some point, we hit a critical mass, right? Do we hire out? We're hiring data engineers, and 80% of their job is answering Jira tickets, reading log analytics, going through the data breaks transformations, running them ad hoc. And at some point, we, we question ourselves. We lose the magic, and we lose the entire essence of data engineering. What is the, and it may I be so bold, what is the entire point of managing a whole data pipeline and validating it? At the end of the day, the business or their data consumers aren't even using it because they don't trust it. Right? And my favorite question here is, well, per SLA, the ticket's still open. How long is that going to take you, right, to answer the ticket, to certify a new pipeline if we have another petabyte of data? How long is that going to take us, right? And why it matters is you may be witnessing this in your organization. And sometimes it's very hard to quantify, right? I assume the majority of the folks here are more on the data ops side or data consumers. But from a business perspective, it's really hard to justify this because when the business gets inaccurate data or unreliable data, sometimes they're like, well, I'm not going to do, use the report because at the end of the day, it's never certified. It's never reliable as well. And they think it's magic, right? The business thinks data ops, data engineering, it's, it's completely magic. But how we quantify that and how we start to bucket in it is upstream data quality issues are having issues with productivity and efficiencies. You know, any consumer of the data itself, if it's not trusted, if it's not reliable, if I don't feel good about the data when I'm using and consuming in my ML models or my BI and analytics, I'm not going to use it. I'm going to make my own decisions, right? When there's revenue influence, you can start to start to see some of the business justification, right? If I'm Henry Tram and I get called Harry Tram for a customer success support ticket, it's fine. One time is okay. Harry Tram has a sister who lives in Minnesota. Okay, maybe we're, we're on shaky ground. Harry Tram has a mom in you know, Kansas and a sister in Minnesota. Okay, well, you don't really understand who I am from a customer. Maybe I won't buy your sandwiches, right? Take that one very silly, simple use case, but roll that out to any sort of your business processes and the consumers of the data themselves. So reducing customer churn, requiring new, new customers, get, getting the certification for validation to operationalize that data. And at the end of the day, when everyone's modernizing to the cloud, 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 right? Compute is limitless, but the cost and the infrastructure isn't, right? 
So from that perspective, it's very, very hard and challenging and a lot of business impact and operational impacts across. And where did this problem start? It, where did it start? Where did it occur when we started ingesting more data? Right? It's just the nature of life. Now we have, I don't even know what 8K or 12K is. We have videos in that format, right? Now we're streaming analytics and we're streaming across IoT and mobile and we need that time to data and certification quicker. And we're in the zettabytes. And a lot of the organizations are in the petabytes for you know, monthly, weekly pipelines across different partitions. So when there's modernization and we need to approach data from a holistic point of view, not just an ad hoc query, not just a siloed solution, not something that, again, puts a bandaid on it and next year we have the same issue because now we have three more pipelines to access the size. We need the ability, the framework that's extensible, centralized, repeatable across all my different pipelines and heterogeneous applications. And your, your modern enterprise may some, it looks something like this. Start somewhere, source, we have bronze, server, and gold, store, curation, and gold. You serve it up to data consumers. Overly simplistic viewpoint of your data itself. But at the end of the day, in, in a lake house architecture, right, there's a whole host of problems that can happen within your entire ecosystem. Naming off a few, did the jobs run? Is my data drifting, right? We run a profile. The percent of not nulls is increasing. That's an issue for our critical data elements. My schemas are drifting. We are going to have that break the pipelines, right? So some of our Spark jobs we're writing, we're writing in the data frame requires those schema validations across, right? The qual data quality, it's a legacy term, it's a new term, but at the end of the day, the data needs to be trusted and there's very specific things we want to check throughout, right? And now we're seeing these other issues. Well, did my data arrive on time? If I'm running the validations in the data breaks transformation in PySpark, and if we have 10x the amount of data tomorrow, is my data breaks cluster over under provisioned? Do I need to upscale that? How about the, the health of your pipeline? If I'm ingesting 100,000 of sources, how do I understand which feeds out of 100,000 feeds are breaking right from source application? How do I build a whole framework around alerting and, for, and be able to enforce that across our different data assets and silos, right? And at the end of the day, mistrust of data, right? If we perform this entire exercise for data engineering and still not being consumed by ML and data science, by data applications and platforms and projects, by dashboards, again, may I be so bold once more, what is the entire point, right? We need everyone to be able to collaborate on a single platform and really understand how we scale this out in a modern enterprise, right? So what we found was one team may be doing ad hoc siloed queries to run some of their validations. Another team may be doing log analytics. Another team may be doing it in the BI report themselves, right? And if we, if we may just take a one step back, how do we scale this out, a centralized, repeatable, extensible platform across on-premise cloud, across different data assets and stewards? So the reality of the world is the use cases, use cases are gonna increase, not decrease. The complexities in your pipelines are gonna increase and, and not decrease. We, we need a framework to be able to scale out and scale in accordance to our data volume to the complexities for the modern enterprise. So that's what end-to-end -end and comprehensive observability is. So taking a look at your pipeline end-to-end, -end, holistically, not only at presentation or consumption, being able to deploy this at scale. So if that's six petabytes of data in 100 different schemas, different data formats, again, some restructured and structure, different types, how do I apply a thousand rules across different schemas? There's no way a single coder can do that in, in a weekend, right? How do I scale data volumes and put anomaly detection on it, right? And not waste time just you know, answering Jira tickets or service now tickets or queries. And that's the name of the game here, right? That's speed to delivery. And the automation around a user or operator would need just to be able to have mission critical SLAs and businesses sufficed. And that's what we solve for uh, here at Excel Data, right? So Gardner, you may have heard of them. They're just this one organization. They start to define things, they guide things, and they're pretty important, right? But they define observability across their landscape as data content, observing the end-to-end flows in the pipelines across the infrastructure and compute, so data breaks, again, you run 2,000 job clusters with over-provision, under-provision, allocating those costs across different BUs and projects. If I run it across ADF and data breaks and I'm adjusting it in data breaks, then maybe it's right? How do I draw all that in the line of business? 
And this is for, again, a customer 360 use case, right? It's very difficult to track that, monitor it, and give you the recommendations across and the usage and utility. As you onboard more users across, we want to ensure that there's the right SLAs, there's the right security, the governance around the users, right, on these roles. And whoever has access to the data should have access to data across, right? So from our perspective, I'll give you the, the two minute, and if like, we'll give you the 20 minute or the entire weekend with Henry to talk about end-to-end -end data pipelines, right? We'll consider a pipeline. Um, may start somewhere, may stop, start, stop somewhere. We're starting all at the source. So it could be on-premise, high of HDFS, could be, could be legacy, but at the end of the day, we still need to certify that, right? What we're looking at here is the blue boxes on the screen are just your assets, your tables, your files through your pipeline. The white boxes are going to be the jobs in between. Could be a data breaks job, could be any sort of ingestion job across the transformation tool across. You'll see these little red icons in between. These are what we call data issues and policies across. Uh, we're not going to go through every single one, but it could be anything from a simple null check all the way to a very complex user defined template across three columns. And you want to deploy this across different schemas, right? Could be a volumes check, could be an only detection and profile check, could be a schema drift check again. And the ability to scale this out in a modern enterprise is very difficult if you're going to code it yourself. You can be the best coder in the world, but how are you going to code this across a thousand tables, right? So the, the speed to delivery and onboarding this is our claim to fame. What we're looking at here is, again, the root cause across 50 validations in a single pipeline that spans on premise to the cloud. So start somewhere, we're ingesting CDC pipelines from Kafka. We're adjusting it from Hive HDFS as well. We're adjusting it from SAP. We're moving it through the Medallion architecture. So we're at Bronze right now, feeding it through a couple of different apps. This is all on Parquet. This is across 12 da different data partitions. We have deep rooted segment analysis to understand the very needle in the haystack of what exactly went wrong. One row that, that speaks off of the nominal value of $10 million across one row can have serious implications, right? And we can find that needle in the state in the haystack very quickly, right? And the reason why this matters is in a single pane of glass. And if we if we think about the, the problem statements, I'm Henry. I'm a data engineer of the pipeline. I work in the pipeline. I do this every day. If I don't know the answers, I'm going to go to Mahesh. Mahesh, he's a data source owner. So I'm going to spend the two hours looking into my logs. Okay, it doesn't work. I ask Mahesh. Mahesh, you know, it takes two other days. He asks. Uh, Spencer on the other side, Spencer takes two days, you know, he's going to ask Stacy on the other side. That effectively, that Jira ticket just keeps become, staying open and not being resolved, right? And then we brush it under the rug and we do it again next month, right? And that's one ticket across your, your enterprise. What this does is it reduces the MTTI and MTTR. So considerably, a lot of the clients we face is we have about a thousand tickets, reduce it significantly. 50% of words, right? Because now everyone has a single pane of glass to, to understand what's happening. You know, is it a data volumes drift across? We expect to see three to $5,000 in income of the data in a given day. And if we see more or less, let's deploy it at scale. Let's send me alert, fire up a ticket, send me a Jira. We do predict predictive and proactive analyses across, right? Uh, could be anything like a data reconciliation. You're moving data through Bronze Server and Gold. You have some transformations. You're curating the data with a mapping table across. Maybe that mapping table is really messed up. And now, because of that, we see that one of the transaction IDs in the region says error, and one says east, right? And one balance is wrong, one balance is right. And to identify that root cause in this modern enterprise is very, very difficult across all your different pipelines, right? So we just make it easy, we operationalize it, and we deploy it at scale, and you know, all, all the users across will be able to get whatever they need. Um, and some of you may cringe with AI and ML. Um, some of you adopt it. Um, everyone here probably uses ChatGPT, I hope, in your modern day. But what does it do, right? It increases productivity and efficiency. It gets to, to front and center what you want to know, or what you need to know before you even know. And then also does predictive analytics and analyses across, right? So what this is doing is it's our co-pilot. We made a serious acquisition to an AI company. It just takes the read-write patterns across your data. data we as data operations can start to understand who's using the data the most, what is high usage data sets, low usage data quality, give you an alert. This is you know, becoming a bigger issue as a critical data element. And then just give you auto recommendations from just no code, from your, your existing role base. And then the, the last recommendation is domain specific recommendations. So healthcare and life sciences, you know, financial services, banking institutions, you know, this looks like this. 
you know, we're baking all of that logic and make it very easy and simple just to onboard this, right? So when data operators come in and they say, well, I have 10 terabytes of data that needs to be certified very quickly, we have all, all, all that baked out for you easily, right? The last piece that I haven't really cemented on, but I'll, I'll talk on behalf of this, right? Everyone's on Databricks, I assume, I hope, right? right? Unless you may be on it soon. So as you onboard more users, what are my workloads that are not optimized? How do I charge that back to different lines of businesses and budgets? How do I have different viewpoints and reports? Maybe I don't want to learn a new platform. Maybe I just want to onboard an existing platform, get an email alert, red, you know, red green, or yellow. How am I doing on a weekly basis for cost, for data reliability, et cetera? So what this looks like here is we're in the data platform ops point of view. We understand the chargeback across different platforms and projects. We have anomaly detection across every project. So onboard it, define your projects. This is project one to 10. This is budget one to 10. Throw an anomaly detection. It gives you forecasts as you onboard more data, your data sets, you have 50 data scientists running ML data science on a thousand clusters. It gives you key recommendations to re-optimize re your workloads, right? And the integration is less than a day. So I know you guys are all engineers, probably. It's always build versus buy, right? Well, I can build all this myself. I'm, sh I'm sure you can. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very sure you can, right? But at, the, at, at what point do we ask ourselves, do I want to spend time building, you know, the ability just to build things and, and say, yes, you can trust this because look at these logs? Or do we want to build data products and platforms that's actually going to drive real business value, right? I could build a CRM, but I'll acquire you know, one of the top CRMs. I could build a messaging, but I'll, I'll acquire it, right? So it's the time to delivery and operationalizing a platform that people actually want to use, right? The last piece I'll leave you off with is not only you get the data platform overview, from a data engineer, what do I care about? What data engineers care about? What are the jobs that are failing? What are jobs that are clusters that are starting to slow down and degrade? How do I right size those clusters? Maybe, and, then, and again, Let's be frank, we don't do, some platforms don't do a good job of telling you exactly what size you need. You can have accelerations ac across, but there might be differences in, in the types of patterns you run those workloads, right? So what we're looking at here is tell me about the failed job successful. Tell me about it in real time, daily, weekly, monthly. Tell me about some of the alerts and recommendations across. If a, a cluster, a query runs across a cluster, does it select star on a terabyte of data and the cluster is downside, right? There might be a big critical issue of that cluster running forever. And we identified, you know, on average 100, 200K per big uh, ticket issue across Excel data, right? Across Databricks as well. So in summary and in short, why do we care? Why does this matter? What is the observability? If I were to leave you four different things, right? Four, four bullet points. One is the speed to delivery and scale. So if you need to deploy this across your end-to-end -end pipeline, not on a single, one little table, but your end to end pipeline. You need to do it quickly and you need to prove this out across different complexities in your pipeline, across different data formats and types. That's the, the, the claim to fame here, right? You need to optimize your workloads. If you have cost concerns, chargeback allocations, if Spencer's asking me, well, how much are you actually spending on Databricks and what is that it actually going for? We do that in less than a day, right? And continue to innovate. So at the end of the day, we, we're all builders, we're all engineers. We want to build these platforms and the projects across. We want to focus on the fun, exciting things, right? Not the bottlenecks, reading through logs, building data, data platforms around logs, right? Um, and we want the ability just to respond to these, so again, if we go back to the main point, the tickets. I don't want to log in every day, 80% of my time, and, and feel, man, how many tickets are going to go in my queue? I was hard on as a data engineer. I want to build cool things. I want to instrument pipelines in Python. Right? I want to do on petabyte scale. And if we can, again, persist the magic of engineering once more, right? let's take all the IT bottlenecks, all the cumbersome stuff we don't want to deal with. Let's just scale that out in a modern platform so we can focus on exciting things. That's going to be a big win for both your organization team and us as well. Right? So here's the last, I think, pitch. Uh, someone slip this in, in, in my slide deck. We have hoodies. <laughs> so if you're cold, it's SF, we have hoodies. Um, we're at booth 72. Um, if you want a demonstration or a free, free trial, we're here. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you so much for joining. Um, really big crowd, so it was a little nerve wracking.